what I'm going to do um, to kick off is I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey um, to the North Pole. Um, first of all, I just would like um, you to say to us when you start doing these kind of expeditions in these type of adverse conditions. Um, well, I was, I was a professional soldier. I was of, an officer in the army uh, studying what was then called Arctic warfare. So you learn to ski and live in extreme conditions. And after I left the army, I carried on as a hobby. And then I got to a stage in life where I had a little bit more time and I started doing the hard expeditions like crossing Greenland, going to the South Pole, then the North Pole. And they're the three big ones. That's called the so-called Polar Grand Slam, doing those big three unsupported. And then people start contacting you by email asking to lead expeditions and it just went from there. In, in these three places that you have been, these three main ones, which one can you say that was the, the one that is like your favourite in a way? Um, it's a stepping stone. Most people would start with Greenland, then go to the South Pole <coughs> and then for me, the favourite is the North Pole, simply because virtually nobody's been there and it is the hardest. And the um, scenery, scenery around you is constantly changing because the ice is moving. So all the time it's different. Whereas the South Pole, pretty flat and the same, pretty much every day. I took one quotation. You said that it was impossible to see the bigger picture. It was just too immense. You just had to think about it on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, the scale of really big expeditions, they're too big. You, you psychologically commit yourself to failure by looking at the big picture. So you just break it down into manageable chunks. And actually, I broke it down into two-hour ch chunks. So you do two hours, two hours, two hours, and then it's lunchtime, and you say, oh, I'm halfway through the day. You've only got another two hours, two hours, two hours until it's the end of the day. And then when you're in the tent after the end of the day, you say, well, I did yesterday, so I can do tomorrow. And the sledge is going to be two kilograms less in weight, so tomorrow's going to be easier. And that's how you, or how I, manage to cope with it personally. Do you, um, these journeys, they, they take um, a lot, a uh, huge physical effort, but I think, I can't believe, I, I have never done it before, but I can believe that they also um, uh, have a very psychologi psycholo uh, psychological. psychological impact on you. Do you see like them as a Spiritual walking, in a way? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, these, these types of journey, they're 20% physical and 80% mental in terms of um, you've got to be right in the head. And it is quite a cleansing process. It sounds a bit weird, this, but um, when else could you have 12 hours a day where you don't have emails or phones going, like that little phone was beeping in the background there, or interruptions? So it's a rare privilege to have 12 hours a day in your own head. It's, it's actually quite therapeutic. Uh, so just the last question. Um, in the, all these years of experience, um, what are the main things that you don't forget? You know. I've guided the Google founders, I've guided the world's best skier, um, Herman Meyer. I was absolutely privileged to be the guide for Prince Harry. So it's sometimes best to stop when you're ahead. It's a, it's a huge privilege to have gone to places and done things that other people haven't done or they've just read about. That's just, that's a privilege in life and you never forget that. Thank you very much. Pleasure.